Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a review of the Broader Limited Paragon 2 Dreyfus Hudson. So let's get started. Alright, so as you guys know, uh, with the release of their second run of these uh, in Paragon 4, uh, these are now on the market for fairly cheap. What's interesting is that these, uh, between between the their announcement of the second run and the end of their first run, these things became increasingly rare in the used market. And these actually went from the original price of, I believe, $599 and they went up inflated, extremely inflated, up to about $1,100. Um, and then with the, you know, with the announcement of the second run, these uh, price prices dropped back down to about 500 bucks now. Uh, so it's actually kind of unfortunate. I could have sold this for quite a bit of money, but uh, I decided to keep it because I really like this engine. So uh, yeah, so real quick, um, this run and the second run, if you want like a quick summary, there really is no major differences in detail or mechanisms. Um, there's some differences. They painted the front drivers. Uh, they added, obviously, Paragon 4 sound. Um, they, they supposedly added a go-pack, like a keep-alive, but uh, there's sources that say that uh, people who actually received theirs already who said that they actually didn't come with a capacitor of any sort, so that's a little suspicious. But anyways, yeah, the main difference between this engine and the other one is uh, the the new decoder and the painted front drivers. Besides that, they should be more or less identical. Identical, so that's why this review this review is still at least somewhat relevant. Uh, you could you could gauge how the engine runs and the details and whatnot from this engine. You could determine with that if you want to buy one of the newer runs. So with that said, let's get started with some history. The New York Central J3A was a 464 Hudson built by Alco. The NYC were famous for their Hudsons, owning 275 in total, ranging all the way from the J1A to the J3A. Of the 50 J3As, the last 10 were equipped with special streamlining designed by Henry Dreyfus in 1938. Known simply as Dreyfus Hudsons, these Super Hudsons were seen pulling only the most premier passenger trains on the NYC, including the 20th Century Limited. With its six 79-inch drivers, these engines could easily reach a max speed of 110 miles per hour. Soon, greater power demands were sought by the New York Central, and the Hudsons were gradually replaced by larger steam, including Mohawks and Niagaras, but were still commonly seen till the end of steam in the late 50s. Tragically, not a single Hudson was preserved. Okay, so now that we know a little bit about this engine, uh, we can start with the details. So we begin with the front, and we'll work our way to the rear. Uh, and the very most, or the very first op most obvious thing you can see here is this really nice plate here. It is actually uh, 3D. There's like it's actually like you know printed properly. It's not just a piece of uh, it's not just a flat piece of uh, brass. It's actually like there's actually a little bit of depth uh, molded into the piece, and it looks really really nice as a result. Uh, we have the headlight here, which is molded really well. You can see some of the additional details here. Uh, this is like this is the little latch that allows you to swing the front of it open uh, with a little piece of clear plastic. So uh, for the lens. Uh, right here we have this um, really beautiful looking um, bit of streamlining here. Uh, you can see there's a few dots here which are intentional obviously. Uh, those are some of the rivets I assume as well as the mounting point up here. In the front here is a really cool looking uh, really streamlined pilot here. Um, this uh, coupler box actually you can uh, demount it. There's a screw in the back. If you remove the screw this can come out and you can replace it. You can replace that screw and you can, you can mount a KD coupler or any other coupler. Uh, in the front here, which is pretty cool. However, I'm probably gonna leave it as this because I don't think I'm gonna be putting any engine in front of this engine. This is obviously this for me is gonna always be in the front of a train, so I don't see the need to remove that. But if you want to, you can add it. They, they, they do give you the choice, uh, and also you can see the continue the beginning of this uh, handrail that continues to the really end there. All right, on the side here, uh, we begin by seeing here. You can see that the air compressor here is actually cut out from the streamlining here, and that, that and that's what uh, resembles a 1940s streamlining. So uh, these engines, th there's basically two types of streamlining, I guess you could say. There's the early and the late, uh, early and late streamlining. Uh, the early version had this part completely covered up with the shrouding here. Uh, that was in 1938. Um, in fact, there's, this air tank back here is all, was actually also covered up by streamlining. Uh, but then in 1940, they actually removed some of the streamlining so it was easier to access some of the main, uh, you know, maintenance parts um, and makes the engine easier to maintain. So this basically makes this engine resemble a 1940s and onward engine, which is pretty cool. But uh, besides that, you can also see the Alesco feed water heater popping out on the side here a little bit. There's a little bit of these vents. I'm not really sure. I, I assume these are maybe number board areas. I'm not really sure, but it looks cool either way. Uh, more of the Alaska feeding pipe. Here's the check valve right here. Uh, I'm not 100% sure where this piping is, but it is really nicely uh, molded. Everything on here is brass, as you know, because this is a brass hybrid after all. 
And yeah, just in general, the details on point here. Um, all the details are molded on, or, or resembled, or you know, in brass and resembled really well. And um, it's really nice stuff. And everything here, because it's brass, it's very solid. Uh, it shouldn't break. Um, at worst, you could probably bend it if you drive it on the ground, which would be detrimental. But um, it, nothing should break off at the very least, which is pretty cool. And then obviously here in the trailing truck, or in the leading truck here, you can see it. It is unpainted, which makes it uh, a Paragon 2 model. Uh, but I don't think it's a big deal. You could easily paint it. I'm, I've just been too lazy to honestly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's it for the side here. If we drop down a little bit, we can see the main driver wheels, and these have the uh, disc drivers here, which look just amazing. I love the look of them. They look so futuristic. It's like a interesting, like steampunk kind of look. I don't know. Um, and then you can see the the cro the the you know the the gloss or not the gloss. What do I call it? The polished um, uh, drive rods here. You can see my reflection in my hand going right past them. It's it's really well done. Um, and you know, there's quite a bit of depth to them, so they don't look like just stamped pieces of metal. Um, it just looks really good, and again, here's the streamlined shouting, so in the 1940s version it will continue on, or 1938 version it will continue on and here, but here you can see kind of the air tank is exposed there, which I actually kind of like more because it shows more detail, uh, you know, otherwise you wouldn't really be able to, really be able to see the air tank, but uh, it's nice that you can actually see it here. Alright, looking toward the rear of the engine, we have more detail here. Uh, the trailing truck here is uh, really well done. I really like the look of it. You'll notice that one wheel is smaller than the other. And that is actually because this rear wheel here is actually a booster engine. In fact, you'll see more um, booster detail right here. This is the mechanism that was behind here. And what this entire thing does here is that this engine, this wheel is actually powered. So the idea is, uh, because there's only six, uh, three, you know, six uh, driver wheels and they're really large in diameter, they were they're the they're, they're most efficient and most powerful at you know their their peak design their efficiency was designed for high speed so what that means is that high speeds they're really efficient however it means that also at low speeds they were very inefficient in fact they would always slip uh, it's actually a, sort of like the the PRRT1 in that sense and uh, so what they what New York Central did was uh, the workaround is they added a booster wheel here so this wheel would be powered and it will actually provide a lot of uh, you know traction and torque uh, during you know slow speed starts um, and they chose this wheel obviously in particular because the trailing truck here is what's holding you know is is what's holding um, supporting the firebox here which is obviously really heavy and uh, so this wheel would have a lot of weight placed down onto it and so therefore it'd be really track it would be it would be a lot of traction, uh, which is nice. You don't, you know, you don't want to power out a leading truck wheel because those things are really light, um, and they're they're designed for guiding the engine into curves. Uh, whereas these are just hold to support the firebox. So, anyways, I digress. So this wheel would basically provide uh, power for up to I'd say around 30 miles per hour. I'm, I'm pulling that number out of my ass, but uh, yeah, it, it basically it, it provides the engine with uh, some more power during slow speeds, and then uh, it, the coupling rods would dis disengage once it reaches higher speeds, because you don't want it to be, you know, you don't want it to be uh, spinning at really high speeds, because it is a smaller wheel after all. But yeah, that's done really, really well. I do, I do like the look of that. Uh, there's a whole bunch of piping here. In fact, here is the uh, Elesco, uh, Elesco feed water heater. It's the pump for the feed water heater. Uh, it basically would take cold water, uh, it would suck it in, and then it would push it into the Elesco feed water heater, which is in the front there, uh, which is also done pretty well. Um, and also, there's a little, little latch here, which does not open, and uh, there's a cab. Uh, which has the uh, separately applied windows, you can see here, and a little cap figure. And then the uh, 54, 53 here is applied really well. Uh, so yeah, let's actually take a closer look at the cab right now. Okay, so now the cab. Uh, first off, I want to note that there's some really nice treading on this, uh, di on this uh, deck plate here. Beneath there you can see the 8-pin uh, plug underneath. Quite a big plug at this point. There's a metal drawbar. And uh, right here, with two pins on it, so you have two different uh, you know, distances between the engine and tender. And then inside the cab, you can see it's actually really well done. Um, it is a one-piece back head, so the pipes are all molded onto the back, or, you know, molded on. Uh, but it's really nicely done. Uh, there's all, all the valves are painted, which is really cool. And uh, all the, uh, you know, valves of the, are uh, yeah, all the, all the gauges are painted and all the valves are painted red, which is really cool. And yeah, it's just overall a really done, a well done cab. Uh, there's two cab figures inside. Uh, they're painted different colors, which is kind of cool. And uh, yeah. Right, on the top of the engine, we have some of these non-opening uh, cab roof vents. We have this, honestly, not really well done um, two latches here. Um, they're, this, the, because this is brass, right, they didn't, and it's not a separate piece of brass. They just kind of stamped it on. And so, unfortunately, it's not very well resembled, but um, 
it is there, which is, I guess, okay. Uh, we also have this really well-made whistle and uh, pop valve, or safety valves here, which are really well done because they are brass after all. Looking toward the front here, we have the uh, chimney here, or <laughs> smokestack. Um, as you can see, it's not, it doesn't really extend much from the sky casing here. And that's actually because Newark Central had a whole bunch of old bridges and tunnels are on their line. And uh, so they actually had a, a lower height clearance than normal railroads. And that's actually you'll notice why a lot of Newark Central engines will have, it looks like it, they look like they're kind of compressed down. Uh, you know, they all have really short chimneys or smokestacks, my bad. Um, and uh, it's quite an interesting look, you know, because they have like huge drivers, but then their engines are so low. So it creates for a kind of unique look, and you know the Dreyfus Hudson is it doesn't is no exception here. Um, so yeah, the chimney doesn't extend much at all. There's two dot holes here. I'm not 100% sure what they're for, and there's a little bit of stuff here, which is really really cool. And uh, yeah, the smoke unit does work. However, I refuse to turn on the smoke in mine because I do not want to have the smoke oil get all over this really beautiful brass engine. On the right side of the engine, we have more of the same wonderful detail, um, including oh, some different piping. Um, and then we also have the dynamo here, the generator right here. And some more piping underneath the cab, which is all just very well done. Alright, moving on to the tender, we can see the uh, huge plug in the front here sticking out. Uh, if we take the flashlight out here, we can see uh, some more separately applied grab irons, which, really, which look really nice. And uh, yeah, the shrouding. Because this is, a, this is a brass engine after all, the shrouding is really thin and fine, which I really like, because it actually looks like real metal instead of like a thick, chunky piece of plastic. Um, and it, I just think it looks really good. On the side, we have a grab iron right here, and then we have more of this beautiful painting here. The paint job is excellent on this model, and the New York Central is really well done. It's very crisp, there's no paint bleed, and it just looks really good overall. On top we have a really realistic coal load here which looks really good again. And then we have, yet again, you can see more of the exposed you know, stuff underneath which I think is really cool. There's a little toolbox here. And I can't really, I can't see what's inside there but there's some more detail. And there's a non-opening uh, water hatch here. Which is just all, again, really done really well. And uh, I just love the fact that you can actually feel it go underneath the shrouding. And it's just really nice. Again, the brass, the, the, the decision to make this out of brass is just genius. I think it was really, it was a smart choice. Here's the rear of the tender. Uh, if we bring out a light here, because it's too dark here, uh, you can see some danger keep out signs, which I think is actually really amusing because my, uh, you know, the other, the non streamlined J1, uh, J, uh, J uh, Hudson's didn't have those. So it means that people were clearly climbing on their, you know, people who are not meant to be climbing on there who were. Uh, which I think is kind of amusing. Anyways, uh, there's an uncoupling lever here as you can see, which does move but uh, doesn't operate obviously. Uh, there's a ladder here which is kind of unique. Uh, there's also the ladder that goes up to the top, an operating uh, rear light there. There's a, a spring, I assume this is kind of to, you know, I don't know, it's a tension spring. Um, there's uh, a few handrails and uh, yeah, it's kind of cool, really well done, there's some really nice printing. And uh, that's pretty much it. I do think it's kind of uh, cool to see how the the you know the original the actual tender kind of ends there. The actual tender ends there, but the shrouding kind of extends a little bit beyond there, and it just makes the tender look a little longer and a little cooler, <laughs> in my opinion. But anyways, it's really well done, and uh, yeah. Now, if we flip the engine around and we uh, expose the underside. You actually see some more details which actually is hidden because of the shrouding from the side. So unfortunately you really can't see these when the engine is running. However, it's cool that the uh, you know BLI did go out of their way to uh, add some of these. So to begin there's this um, cow catcher or pilot here with uh, the, steam ho or the steam hose is on this side and then the brake hose is on this side. I think it's really cool. Toward the middle we have the uh, water scoop obviously. So uh, New York Central, similar to PRR, had uh, these track pans in the middle of the track that just was full of water and so the idea is that the engines can just you know run past the track pans at about you know at a medium speed and uh, pick up water on the fly without stopping which I think is kinda cool uh, I really wish I could see that in real life but unfortunately I wasn't born then uh, but yeah there's a, there's a track pan here so this will basically just lower and then uh, it would just scrape onto the track pan and pick up a lot of water uh, you can also see some brake some basic brake detail and then also uh, two speaker grills here one more thing I want to note is that the side of the streamlining here is intentionally uh, juts out a little bit here so you can navigate the uh, the truck here because uh, there is a re-railer I believe, uh, I'm not 100% sure what that is, but there's, a, there's an extra piece of detail on this side, on this truck in particular and you know that, that 
the fact that the streamlining kind of cuts out here uh, allows it to navigate, you know, without shorting out or anything like that. And I think it's a nice touch. Uh, it's really nice that Broadway Limited actually thought of that and did it. It does, you know, subtract from the from the accuracy a little bit, but I think it's worthwhile. Toward the front, you can see there's an on-off switch with huge on and off letters with a little tiny switch in the middle here, right below the firebox on the uh, engineer side. And then also, I'm just going to do this in one shot because I don't care. You can see some brake detail here. And that's really cool. And that pretty much wraps up the detail for this engine. So let's get started with the running. Okay, now we have power on the track. And uh, we're going to test the running capabilities of this engine. So uh, let's begin with some uh, stats here. So this engine weighs 1 pound 8.2 ounces. Now compared to BLI's plastic non-Dreyfus uh, J1D, J1E, uh, Hudson's, those weigh, at least my J1D Paragon 2 weighs uh, 1 pound 3.2 ounces. So it is 5 ounces heavier. It is not a huge difference. Um, people think that brass is a lot heavier than plastic engines and that's just simply not true. Uh, brass, because it is metal, but it's still thin. You know, you saw how thin the shrouding was on the tender. It's literally just sheet brass. It's not much heavier than, a, you know, a thick, chunky plastic casting. Uh, in fact, plastic engines usually have more weight in them because they're better designed. Uh, brass engines usually don't have that. So this is about, honestly, the same weight, and it'll pull about the same as the uh, J1D. One thing to note, as far as pulling power goes, is that this thing does have traction tires. The Paragon 2 run did come with a separate driver without traction tires, so you can change that out. Um, I would recommend keeping it on because this train usually pulls the 20th Century Limited, which is like a, you know, 15, 20 car set, maybe a little more. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't model NYC. Um, but anyways, regardless, to pull that much, I would assume you probably would need a traction tire. So, yeah. Uh, something else to note, Paragon 4 does, to my knowledge, it does not come with a separate traction tire, less wheel. You simply have to have the traction tires, um, which is interesting how BLI decided to cut costs and not give you that. But anyways, uh, that's pretty much it for this engine. Let's get her started. So, this is Paragon sound, or Paragon 2 sound, as you know. That light turns on there. And you guys can see that. It's a really nice, pleasing yellow, yellowish white. Um, looks really good. I really like this whistle. I think it sounds much more like NYC than the Paragon 4 one does. However, I don't know what the I don't know what the three whistles that they gave for the Paragon 4 uh, version. Um, but I know the stock this stock whistle sounds better than that one. That's all I know <laughs> from the videos that I watched. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna turn the sound off real quick, and we could test how it runs. So speed step one. Really smooth and quiet start. I'll speed it up a little bit. Stopper. And yeah, the uh, roller bearings and the drivers just look amazing when under motion. Yeah, so it performs very well. Uh, as you know, these uh, do have a 5 pole can motor, SKU 1 can motor, and I believe a 14 to 1 gear ratio. I think it's standard across all BLI engines, but uh, yeah, it performs flawlessly. So, yeah. Uh, real quick, we'll listen to the sounds again. Standard Paragon 2 stuff, you know. I really like the bell in this, actually. And there's all the other features, which I will not be getting into, but uh, yeah. <laughs> BLI, they have a full list of 28 functions. You can easily find that on their website. Um, you honestly, realistically, you don't use most of them. Like, there's like, there's like cow sounds and whatnot. I don't bother with that stuff. But yeah, a really solid engine, so yeah. We're gonna get a train coupled to her, and uh, we'll see how she goes. Okay, so I have her coupled to an express commuter mail train. Um, unfortunately I don't have, you know, any really nice cars. I don't, this, this kind of engine will be pulling the 20th Century Limited or something like that. Unfortunately I don't have any of those cars, nor do I really plan to get any of those because I don't model the NYC. I don't, I'm not going to invest $500 into a set I don't really, will, I, would, I don't plan to really run. So, that being said, this is all I have, so this is what you got. That being said, let's get her steam. So,
Alright, and that concludes my review for the BLI Dreyfus Hudson here. Um, some final thoughts, I think this is an excellent engine. Uh, I think if you don't get, if you can't get your hands on the Paragon 4 version, or if you want to save some money, honestly, this run, I personally prefer Paragon 2 over Paragon 4, so I actually prefer this over the newer run. However, you know, if you prefer Paragon 4 and you have the money, by all means, get the newer run, but uh, I'm just saying, these are totally viable. And if you're going to, you know, change the decoder or whatnot, you know, anyways, you might as well get the older run. I mean, they're just as good, and they're going for about $400 to $500 right now, as opposed to the $700 they're going for, for the new run. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Great engine. I don't have any really complaints. Um, you know, I think it's a solid engine all around. Great detail, uh, you know, great uh, mechanism, and good enough sound. So, yeah. But that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.